message. See, they got the message. Okay. So now it's pending, right? So now if we check here, it will pending, right? In a later while, this pending will go hit uh, to the complete and then this will complete, right? So now if you check this one, say it is success. Do it, do it, okay? I love good coffee. I think I have told you this, right? Biggest thing I miss from United States is just having a good coffee. In Sri Lanka, we have coffee places, but nothing is nearby to me or my place. But it's not a real good coffee. Anyway, so today we are going to do something special. Uh, in last few weeks, we were discussing how uh, and why HTTP based backends are suffering, right? So this weekend, it was a special for like, especially in the IT sector in Sri Lanka, because government launched a new app for like uh, full quarter management. And then that app started to suffer so many problems just after a few minutes of its launch. But I mean, uh, since we started to discuss a different uh, system, I'm not going to deviate from that. We are keep going and I'm going to today demonstrate uh, the solution for that. But if we didn't start at that, we could have like kind of a think about this uh, full app, uh, how we can kind of revamp or what are the problems and we could have redesigned that. Okay, anyway, so I'm not going there. Uh, today, what we are going to do is um, solution, a practical demonstration to solve the HTTP based microservice uh, architecture. So if I want to, if I go to recap again, uh, what uh, we discussed in the previous video, one of our previous video actually, uh, why HTTP is bad for microservice based project, HTTP backends are why it's bad. So there we discussed the slowness and also if what happened if the service unavailable also what happened if the service start to suffer some performance issue, which is not controlled by us, it's just remote service, which is controlled by maybe a different company or a different team, then uh, we are getting cascading failures. We discuss all of this, right? And if you didn't watch that, you need to go and uh, watch like I think uh, two videos back. So you can find that video, why HTTP is a bad uh, idea for uh, microservices. And then in the last video, we discussed a solution for that, how we can solve it. So if you, I mean, this video is completely based on that solution. So therefore, you won't understand this solution, though it's a practical demo, you won't understand that if you didn't watch the previous video. So if you didn't watch, just post now and go back and watch that video and come back to this video. Okay. So today, um, so I'm going to show you first how this solution work, right? So if you go here, so this is kind of a, um, this is just a Kafka and Kafka response, just for illustration purpose, right? Otherwise, it's just a basic Kafka and it's a two different topics. That's what I'm trying to tell. But for easy of uh, representing, I use the two different boxes with the really different colors, right? So this is the same system we discussed uh, last video. We have a new connection service and then when the new connection requests, uh, the cable TV and the fixed line need to verify and tell whether these customers don't have any outstanding or anything, right? For uh, transaction, you're going to use a passport ID. And then if everything is verification is success, then finance service will deduct the card and uh, do this payment. And if the payment is success, then activation service will do the activation. Then new connection service can send the email to the user and say um, uh, his connection is active. So now, uh, when we think this solution, we need to consider two points. One, how custom, because the UI is completely disconnected, right? After this new connection request made, everything's happened in the behind the scene through disconnected manner, right? Because these are the messaging. So how new connection user or a operator knows what ha what is happening, what is going on with his request, right? So for that, we are implementing a new endpoint where when the new connection submit, it will give you a unique ID, kind of a request ID to you. And then the system can put that request ID and also the uh, passport number and always ask, hey, what's happening to my request? Something like that, okay? So, so now, this video is a little different than our usual practical demo video. If you see here, we need to implement five different services, right? And implementing five different services, you watching me coding, doesn't make any sense. Don't worry, every single code I use in this service, I have used in the Kafka advanced video, right? In case you don't understand what is happening here, you can go back and watch my Kafka advanced video and then you have that code, what I'm doing there. 
right? And also to give this a real microservice architecture, one service I implement Java, another service I implement using a node, right? So then you can see the real microservice feeling, right? Because the microservice world we learn is not necessary all the services to be in the same language. The service can be in multiple languages, doesn't matter, right? So uh, one service, the finance service will be in using Java, Spring Boot application, and others are Node.js application, right? Node with the app, uh, actually not Node, pure Node, it's a TypeScript-based application, right? So now let's see how this works. So when the request comes to the new connection, and then new connection will publish a message to the Kafka. And immediately that message will get by uh, cable TV and the fixed line services. Keep in mind, everyone get this message, right? But since the message type, based on the message type, they don't act, right? Even the finance and the activation will get this message. And now the cable TV says, hey, I'm good with this customer. And then it go to the uh, new connection service. Again, new connection service listening it. Everyone listening it, who was listening to this topic, but others don't act, right? And then fixed line also say, I'm okay with this customer that also go in there. So now it's publishing, hey, I'm, this new connection is past the verification stage. They're good with the verification. And now it, uh, that, that message has come to the finance and finance deduct their payment and send in the other message to the Kafka. And then uh, it send the message. Uh, and because this, this, uh, this message, what was sent by this finance, is taking by activation and new connection both, right? Because activation was told, hey, if someone is finance access, you can go ahead and do the uh, connection activation, right? And everything is ready. Now uh, activation says I'm good. And now new connection can send the mail. Keep in mind, this is completely demo purpose application, right? I completely understand there, have be, there has to be a tons of things in, in between, right? And also, if you remember, in the last video, we discussed two different patterns. One is a choreography, another one is a command, right? So this is kind of a hybrid of this. Why I implement that? To show you how you can use the uh, both things. Because for example, command model is represented here. If the activation from the cable and the fixed line, then uh, this new connection service is decide what to do. That's kind of a command model behavior, right? But when the finance is response and say hey finance is done no one need to tell activation service go ahead and do your work activation service automatically itself go and uh, doing the activation process right so that is a, a choreographic behavior right i made this in a kind of a hybrid version so it would be easy for you okay sounds good i think i'm good this is two hours later okay so now i have implemented all the services right and let's go through one by one and i tested one time it worked fine and um, if something is wrong yeah we can fix it so this is uh first service okay not first service i'm going to go through the from the very first service okay so this is the service where you get the new connection when the new connection request comes someone from the ui front end they submit the new connection okay. so new connection service and you can see uh these all services almost same and I'll do, uh, show you, take you through the Spring Boot service as well, Java service. One service from Java, another service is from TypeScript. Okay. So in, there's an environment variable and there we configure a service name and service port and uh, broker URLs and also client ID, uh, mainly listening topic and produce topic. So why you need these two? Because as I explained you before, uh, this is kind of a mixed pattern, hybrid pattern. Some service work in the command model and some service work in the choreographic model. Okay. So, right. So if you come to service, so how this works, so you can see here, they can uh, submit a, a service request, right, to the connection. And then we check whether it's a, a, a new connection type and is a passport number is available. If it is available, it's not available if we throw error. If it is available, what we do is we go to a new connection service and from there, uh, we initiate the new connection, right? So initiate new connection is nothing but you create a basic model because by default is all empty, right? The workflow is a pending. So we create empty workflow with the cable TV pending, fixed line pending, finance approval pending and activation status pending, everything pending, right? And then we generate a unique ID. After that, we uh, create a unique Redis key. So this is very important to understand 
when you create the redis key it's always good you use your app and your module your service and then uh, your real data because when you set up the redis permission this will be really useful right and then now what we do is we uh, create this empty object against this user right so that means there is a work uh, there is a something is ongoing okay and then what we do is we produce um, a message to the message broker Kafka. Remember our uh, this example, right? So we produce a message to, right? After uh, connection comes, we produce the message to the Kafka, right? So that is what we do here. We produce the message. We say connection name, connection type. Type is new connection. This is important, right? So now all of them, all of them get this message, right? Finance gate, activation gate, cable TV gate, fixed line gate, but. Okay, finance and activation is not interested about this because it's a new connection, right? Finance interesting if all activators, oh, uh, verification is done. Activation interest if the finance is done, right? Payment is done. Otherwise, they don't interest, okay? So now it comes here and then uh, it will uh, produce the event, right? I will come to the consumer after seeing uh, this is from the activation side, okay? So now uh, from the cable TV side, verification side. So now this is the same service. We have this, uh, not the same service, almost same. We have this uh, uh, property file, but there the cable, uh, the service name is different, right? If you come here, you will see they have a consumer, okay? Consumer will see this message. Again, you will see this is like a huge code or something like that. Yeah, I code for like two hours, but Every single code of this module, these services, we discuss on the advanced Kafka video, right? If you have any problem with this, why you put this property, what does this mean, what does that mean, go back to our advanced uh, Kafka video, that explain every single code, nothing new, okay? So that's guaranteed. Okay, so here, what we do is, uh, we subscribe, we don't want to uh, worry about that up to here, we auto commit false, that's also we discuss why we do that. And then what we do is, see this one, right? If the message is new connection, then only we interested about this. If the message is new connection, we wait for five seconds and we produce other message saying cable TV side verification success, right? So you can consider within this five minutes, we go to the database and we see where they search this passport number and see whether this passport number has a previous good record, whatever, right? So that's the way our business logic goes. And after that, we publish the message saying, we are good. So now what happened? So here you can see in you know, this slide, right? So cable TV responded and now that come to the new connection service. Now it's time to go and see new connection service consumer. Okay, new connection service consumer. This is little complicated. I mean, complicated means because of the business logic. Uh, it is not the technical complicated, complicated, right? I will explain you one by one. Just listen. Okay, just listen and try to understand. Okay, here this is how it works. When the request comes, right? This is just login purpose, right? When the request comes, what we do is we get that event. Okay, that means cable TV says, okay, cable TV side, we are okay. We get that event. Now we generate a key pattern. Okay, because by now we don't have the unique ID because we didn't save it, the request ID. Okay, I mean, we could save it. Uh, that's easy, but I didn't do that to show you this one, right? See this Redis key. If you see here the service one, the Redis key has passport number and the unique key. Okay, but now when the consumer says unique key is anything, but get the this Redis key, right? So this one, the message key. Okay, because I did that because I didn't save the unique key. If you save the unique key with the event, then it's perfectly fine. You can fetch it with this one, right? But for the key, what I just sent is the passport, not the unique key. Why I did that? Because activation service and cable TV service, finance service, they're not interesting about this particular activation ID, right? Activation request. They're only interested about the passport. They only care whether this user has some good history. They don't care about this, uh, this request ID. That's why I didn't save it, okay? Now what we do is uh, we get the key. So that's why I put this comment, a few comments here because I wanted to complete this code fast. I didn't do the full perfect validation. This is just a demo project. And then we get 
the record from the Redis, right? We pass the record, right? Uh, we, uh, sorry, here we get the Redis key pattern and we fetch all the keys belong to this pattern, right? So since this is a demo project, I just got the zeroth one, right? The first one, otherwise you could match with the unique UUID, right? We get that one and we uh, print that saying this is the what came from the cache, right? And then if this is, if this response is from either cable TV or the fixed line, that's important because we need to wait all the verification success to the go to the next level, right? Just because cable TV says I'm okay, we cannot go to the finance because uh, the fixed line also has to tell that, right? They're in the same group. So because of that, we are saying if the message is coming from the cable TV or a fi uh, fixed line, right? The message type is that, then if it's a cable TV, we take the history object, we got the uh, status from the Redis, right? We update, hey, cable TV said this is success, right? And if the fixed line, it says this is success. So now if you go back here, what will happen, right? This got here and it's check, it's indicate this, this is success, right? And now, now here they do is, after that it check with the workflow, this history status, is all true, right? If you go to this implementation, you will see what this just do is, it just um, get the object value, the history, every value should be success, right? So that means under history section, we have two, finance and, uh, sorry, in the history section, we have two, cable TV and the fixed line, right? If both success, if both say uh, success, success, then we consider its verification is success, right? So don't worry, this entire code will be in the GitHub, and you can go to uh, my GitHub profile and you can um, get this code, right? Everything, is, everything will be there. So now, if this is say success, that means all are success. That means verification part is success. We are moving towards to uh, next level, right? So now we publish the message saying verification success, right? And the verification success, who is interested into that is a finance service. Now it's time to go to uh, Java code, okay? Here is very simple, it's a Spring Boot application, right? Nothing much. So you can see here, I configured these properties, uh, same as uh, before, right? Same as node application. And if you go here, you have a two services. One is a consumer and another one is a producer, right? So consumer, uh, we listen to the new, con new connection topic and the group ID is a finance group, right? And then what we do is that if the event type is a verification complete because he is sending verification complete this only interesting for this service right and then it push into the um it wait 10 sec 10 seconds to just to show that it's doing something and then publish a message saying payment complete right so now this is the way real choreography take into place right because payment complete right so now if you see this consumer, when it says payment complete, right, it published the message to finance complete, but no one is interesting about this message, right? It just say, hey, payment finance is complete. If someone is willing to see that, they will see it, right? Otherwise, this is kind of an arbitrary message. But how really activation service work, right? Activation service work, right? Uh, if the payment complete, that means this is a choreographic model, right? So in other uh, choreographic model, uh, in other words, you can see here, right? So when finance service says, okay, that message comes to, see, this message comes to new connection, the activation at the same time, right? Activation react to immediately. It, it doesn't expecting a command from the new connection. New connection doesn't drive the command. This is the choreography model, right? The finance says payment complete. Now activation react to that. Okay. So that is what I wanted to show you. Okay. So though, uh, though this one, uh, like, see here, it get the payment complete. Based on the payment complete, it do the activation complete, right? Uh, activation is complete. And same time, same time, in the new connect, uh, new connection consumer also get the payment complete, right? Based on the payment complete, it published new message saying activation co finance complete, but no one is care about it, right? Uh, it's just a message floating. I'll show you that. And we, every single time we update the Redis, what's happening, okay? 
So now, uh, rest of two services is almost identical. It's a uh, activation service and the cable TV is the same, right? So now let's go and see this. First, I'm going to uh, run this one. Okay, I'm going to run uh, Kafka. Okay, so meantime, I'm going to start each of these services. Okay, I'm going to run each, run each of these services. So you saw, uh, you can download uh, this code from my GitHub and then uh, use exactly same. You can download and you can just run it because there is no database or anything. Only thing is you need uh, this local Kafka cluster. Uh, I also have a repository for Kafka cluster as well. You can just download it and you can run in your machine. It will create a Kafka cluster in local. It, that means technically, Without doing anything, you can just get this code into uh, your machine and then you can work. Also, I include the readme file. I got a request to include the uh, commands, right? Uh, topic creation and everything. I included those commands as well. But here, uh, I just uh, made it to the uh, auto topic creation, right? So therefore, you don't have to create the topic manually. Without uh, creating topic, you can do this, right? So now everyone is listening, right? This is listening, this is listening, this is listening and everyone is listening okay so i'm drawing a line here just to see uh, the change right you just need to carefully look uh, probably you need to come back and revisit okay so i'm going to create new um, i'm going to create a new request right the connection time is connection type is uh, this one right so this is a java service uh, rest of the express services right so this is a new connection service this window is a cable this window is a um, fixed line this window is a finance service this one window is activation service right so now let's send one request so now you can see here request came right so now he's working on that see you can see here uh, cable tv is success right so now you can see uh, fixed lines in the re response, it's success, right? Just wait, finance service, finance service will send the response now. Then you will see it's success, see, it's success, finance service or success. And then you will see activation service uh, respond in a while, which means uh, 10 minutes later, so it's 10 seconds later, it will respond, right? So now you can see everything is ready and success, right? Everyone is success. So now, if the let's say UI hit this endpoint, so let's say we get this particular record, this particular ID, right? And we are sending this to here, right? And also, uh, what is my request ID, passport number, right? And I put it here. So now when I, if I inquire this, it will tell me everything is success right everything is success now let's see the scenario right so now what we are going to do is we are going to put this finance service down okay for some reason finance service is down that, that's real case right so now if this was a http what happened we go to the cable tv success fixed line success we go to finance but it doesn't respond right finance doesn't respond so now we fail so now we need to come back and store this as a failed transaction. Now next, we need to have a retry process, right? And we need to wait until some time uh, finance service is up. We don't know what time we need to try in every 30 minutes, every 30 minutes, every 30 minutes. Now, if this was the HTTP, now see what? Finance is down, rest of services are up, right? I'm going to send the request, right? I'm going to send a request by just adding um, this English one number. Okay, so I'm sending a new request. Now you can see the new request came here. Okay, so now you can see here cable TV success, right? In a while, yeah, fixed line success. Now this will not go anywhere from here. Why? Because finance service is not responding, right? Everyone is listening, finance service is not responding. Let's say 30 minutes later, uh, user saying my connection is not active yet. Right, so now we call this from the UI. Okay, we call this from the UI. Okay, uh, we get this one. 
we get this one we get this one and we go boom you can see it says see cable tv success fixed line success finance is pending right now they can probably open a request to finance department saying hey our request not getting verified or something like that okay so now let's say we call them finance service guys came and fixed their system okay so now just after finance system fix the system they will get the message see they got the message okay so now it's pending right so now if we check here it will pending right in a later while this pending will go hit uh, to the complete and then this will complete right so now if you check this one say it is success now we are waiting for activation right so activation will send the request okay so activation send the re uh, response now everyone is success see everyone happy <laughs> okay it's cool right so this is the complete even driven system Keep in mind, this is not the perfect, right? So once you get the code, you will understand. I put certain comments. We need to throw these, right? Also, let's say what happened if a uh, fixed line says, no, I cannot verify this client. Then the process stop, right? We need to handle all those things in the real system. But what I want to show you is, it's completely event driven. It doesn't matter someone is offline. It doesn't matter someone is slow. It doesn't matter someone is not there at all, right? because we wait until that step to come. And then the biggest question is how, what, how front end knows what's happening. Front end can either keep polling this or uh, at every time there's something update, you can send the uh, update to the soccer channel, then front end will know it, right? So you can, I mean, you can of course expand this solution uh, to uh, your extent you want. If you have any other questions regarding this, just uh, send me the question. I will really happy to answer. And also I will push, uh, put this project, push, yeah, push. And then you can get the project and you can work. Uh, maybe I'm a little tired now because it's, it's I like three hour long process. I record one hour and did the coding for two hours and then I again record. But somehow I hope you got an idea. You will have this PowerPoint and all this code in the GitHub. Take it, do it, do it, okay? You will feel like, no, I know what happening now. I don't need to do it. No, you need to do it. Then only you will really learn. Then... See you in the next video. Stay safe. Take care.